Hey everybody, welcome back to Easy Freezer Meals. And today we are making America's favorite comfort food. We're making meatloaf and it's gonna be amazing. Trust me, you're gonna go back for seconds and stick around because at the end of the video, I'm gonna share a tip on how to get so much flavor into this meatloaf, you're not even gonna believe it. So I've broken it down into two sections sauce and meatloaf and so with the sauce you're going to dice your onions and bell peppers and you're going to toss that into a pot now um, there's a good chance you're not going to be making 18 loaves so uh, you don't need a pot quite this big but you just want to get your onions soft once they are nice and soft uh, which takes generally about 10 minutes you're going to add your bell peppers and then you're going to add your seasonings and then once you add your seasonings you're going to add your worcestershire sauce and then coming back, you're gonna add your red wine vinegar. Now you can add apple cider vinegar if you want. I probably wouldn't use white vinegar. Um, you, I guess you could even add rice wine vinegar if you want. So anyway, um, this tomato calls for diced canned tomatoes or diced tomatoes. You're gonna make sure you pulse those a little while first. And then once you've got those nice and pulsed, you're gonna go ahead and toss that into your sauce. And this is gonna give your sauce just a really nice even texture. It's technically not necessary, but I found that it cooks a lot better and it spreads a lot better and it, uh, it leaves a nice little caramel sauce. So finally, you want to add your ketchup to this sauce. And what you're going to do is you're going to mix that around. You're going to let it cook for about 20 minutes on medium heat and set it to the side. You could actually prepare your sauce a day or so in advance if you'd like. So now you want to prepare your vegetables for the meatloaf itself. And you have celery, bell peppers, and onions. And I'm just processing all of that through what I consider the world's best food processor. This is the RoboCoop. And I'm going to put a card right here. Go ahead and click on that if you want to see what the RoboCoop is all about. But uh, we're taking those three vegetables. We're dicing them all together. And then when we're finished dicing them, we're going to set them to the side. Get your, get your eggs and your Dijon mustard. And I'm a little OCD when it comes to my ingredients. And so I like to prep them ahead. Uh, get your ketchup and once you get your ketchup you're gonna get your cream and uh, set all those in little cups to the side or technically you could put it in one bowl and mix it around there's your Worcestershire sauce and you're gonna put that to the side now you're gonna add your salt and your pepper and I like to weigh it out so I have it in grams um, I just find that it gives me a more consistent product every time if uh, if it's weighed out but um, but once you have that weighed out, you're going to go ahead and set that to the side. And then we're going to go ahead and get our next ingredient. And our next ingredient is going to be the herbs. So, no, it's the breadcrumbs. Sorry. So we're going to measure out our breadcrumbs, set that to the side. It's just going to make uh, assembling the meatloaf a whole lot easier. And there's the herbs. Hello. That is rosemary. And then here in a second, we're going to do thyme. And what I want to do is I'm going to put those in my spice grinder. In this case, it's just a coffee grinder. And I'm going to pulse those until they're really pulsed <laughs> quite well. It's going to help incorporate the ingredients um, a whole lot better. And you're going to find a perfect meatloaf is going to have a really nice texture. It's not going to be too firm. It's not going to be too soft. It's going to be very delicate. There's my parsley. And then finally, we're going to get our garlic, which is weighed out as well. So we're going to take all those ingredients, set that to the side. That's for the meatloaf. Remember those vegetables? It's time to cook them. And we're going to pour everything into a large pot. And this is just simply a little bit of oil, some celery, some bell pepper, and some onions. There's nothing else, no salt, no pepper. And we're going to cook that on a medium to high heat. And it's going to start to reduce. It's going to release a lot of juice. We're going to go ahead and add our garlic. And this is after probably about 20 to 30 minutes of cooking. You're going to have your vegetables really soft. You're going to add your parsley and your rosemary thyme powder at this time. And you're just going to mix that really well. And uh, it should smell absolutely amazing at this point, by the way. If you uh, keep it on about a medium heat at this point, it's not going to burn. And it's going to cook exactly that, the way that you want it to cook. And so once you have all of those ingredients mixed, you cook them for about five minutes, take it off the heat, and you're going to put them in a sieve. And you remember that whole, I'm going to give you a pro tip on how to pack the flavor into your meatloaf? Here it comes. As you're draining your sauce, as you're draining your, your vegetables, you're going to notice that that sauce is rich. 
in uh, basically all the liquid that you've just extracted from your onion, celery, bell pepper, from your herbs, from your parsley, your garlic. And so there's a lot of umami inside that liquid. Most people don't ever do anything with it. If you add it to your meatloaf, it makes your meatloaf too watery and it ruins your meatloaf. And if you throw it away, well, you really miss out on a wonderful opportunity. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour all that into a skillet and over a nice gentle heat, we're gonna bring it to a boil, stirring it occasionally. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically cook out all the water, leaving 100% umami vegetable essence. And you're gonna see what I'm talking about here in a second. And this single step right here is gonna add so much flavor to uh, to your meatloaf that whoever is eating it isn't going to know why, but they're going to find it incredibly delicious. And so most people will add uh, monosodium glutamate to synthesize what this is going to do naturally. And so see how it gets thicker, starts to look like a caramel. And once it starts to stick to your spatula or spoon, it's ready. And you can go ahead and take that and pour it over your vegetables. Now your vegetables are cooling at this point. And you do not want to add that to your meat sauce until they have cooled completely. So at this point, as you can see, it's still very hot, but I've mixed all that together. And um, I'm going to set that aside to let it cool. And now we're going to go ahead and take our meat for our meatloaf and get that going. So we have uh, pork that is 10% fat, 90% lean. And we have beef that is 80% lean. 20% fat. We have 80 20 on the beef. And the reason I like that combination is because if I go any heavier on the fat with the pork, then um, the, the meatloaf doesn't bind together well. And so I find that a 10% pork and a 20% beef works perfect. And now that our vegetable mixture is cooled, we're going to go ahead and just gently incorporate it. The thing is, is you don't want to overwork your meat. The, one of the biggest mistakes people make when making meatloaf is they're, they work it almost like they're uh, kneading, you know, flour like you're making French bread. And what happens is you end up breaking apart the proteins and it binds together and you end up getting more of like a sausage texture. So what we're doing now is we're incorporating all of the other ingredients with the exception of the breadcrumbs. So you've got your Dijon and cream and salt and pepper and now you have your ketchup and we're going to add our eggs here in a second that have been just slightly whipped. You know, you want to whip them a little bit and very gently I'm going to go ahead and start incorporating this uh, together. And notice it looks really runny and really watery, but don't worry. It's going to come together beautifully here in a minute. And you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful, what we call a mince ready for the next step. And so once you get that all ready to go, it should be very easy to work. There should be no puddles of liquid anywhere. And all your ingredients should be well incorporated. Go ahead and add your breadcrumbs. And just pour your breadcrumbs right in on top. This is going to do a few things. It's obviously going to act as a binder. It's going to absorb also more liquid, giving you a more juicy, juicy uh, bite every time you take a bite out of the meatloaf. And um, now you're ready to go ahead and put them in your tins. Now, I use cake uh, pans. And in each cake pan, I put 1,500 grams. That's roughly three pounds of uh, mixture in each uh, cake pan. But I make sure I weigh each one of them out. And then once I do that, I try to compact it as much as I can. I don't want any air pockets. And I make a little valley right in the very center of it so that whenever I put my sauce, I get kind of like this nice little area in the middle that's a little heavier on the sauce. But uh, but it's actually, it's not necessary to, to do any of that stuff. But really, you just want to make sure it's compacted well. And um, now you're ready for the next step. And so what I do is I take a half a cup of sauce that we made earlier, and I pour it over each meatloaf and just spread it around with a spoon and go ahead and stick it in an oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees. Now, uh, I can do 16 at a time with my two ovens, but um, most often uh, home ovens can do roughly about six at a time. And so uh, if that's the case, pop six of them in there. And when the internal temperature gets to be about 155 degrees, your meatloaf is ready. And that's because of the pork. We want to cook the pork to 155 um, and I'm using my Javelin Pro thermostat, which I'll put a link in the description box below. It is amazing. So at this point, I'm going to let them cool. And once they cool, look how beautiful they look. I'm going to wrap them in saran wrap. And I'm going to put them in the fridge or freezer. And uh, that way, it'll help them set up so that they're a little easier to work with. Uh, most often, I'll actually put them in the freezer 
and then the next morning I'll pull them all out. And like I said, we're doing about 18 of them. So this is the next morning for me. And if you're not going to serve them up in individual uh, like portions, then you're finished. You can go ahead and wrap this up in saran, pop it in a freezer saver bag, and pull it out the next time you want to have meatloaf for dinner. You can also individually portion your sauce so you have that ready. But for my business, uh, we actually serve these up in portions of two. So I'm going to cut mine much like you would cut sushi. And so I'm going to cut mine into four sections, four even sections. And then I'm going to cut each one of those sections in half, which is going to give me eight even portions. And um, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second uh, as, as to how I plate it up. And so what's, what's really kind of interesting is that this dish does so good as a freezer meal. And look at this. This is so pretty. You get really nice big pieces. I'm going to go ahead and plate up mine with a side of something called home fries. And check out that card if you want to learn how to make home fries as a freezer side dish because it's very easy and I think you'll love it. And you can serve them up together. But you can also serve this with macaroni or anything you want. And I'm putting about a half a cup of sauce on each meatloaf. And I'm done. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and plate it up. I mean, uh, cover it up and um, put these in, in the freezer. And in, at this stage, they're good for about six months um, in the freezer. If, if I were to keep them whole and put them in a freezer saver bag, they'd be good for about a year. But let me show you what one looks like from Frozen. So I pulled this out. This is a week after I made it. So it's frozen, rock solid. I'm going to pop it in the oven at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. And look at what I got. I've got an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful meatloaf that just looks so appetizing. And the texture holds together really well. It's incredibly moist. I want you to take a peek real quick at, uh, at, what, at what I'm I wish you could smell this. And you've got a lot of things going on there. you got your vegetables. You have your umami. You have all the different herbs and the sauces and the, and the mustard and... That's how you make meatloaf as an easy freezer meal. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you make it. And if you do, leave me a comment in the comment section below. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing because every week we post new recipes for easy freezer meals that you to make. And we have taken making freezer meals up a whole nother level. Trust me. Give it a like if you like this video and share it with all your friends. And don't forget to keep it frozen.